Hey there, so we're gonna be fixing or actually repairing or replacing threads on a stripped crank arm. Uh, installing the pedal, the didn't get installed correctly. Most likely it's uh, maybe the wrong pedal, got tried to install on the wrong side, stripped the threads on the crank arm, and um, we're gonna have to put new threads in. So there's a kit that they have where you're gonna strip out all it, clean it up basically, and then we're going to create new threads, and then we're gonna install a helicoil that is gonna be the permanent threads, and then let that dry, and we'll have something to work with. So you got a reamer and you got some new helicoils. So this kit right here, a uh, company called Yunwar, I think I spelled that or said that right, U-N-I-O-R. So here they give me a bunch of uh, bushings. These are 5 8 by 24. And then they give me basically the kit. Uh, they've got a left hand and a right hand. So we're going to be working with the right pedal, which is the drive side if you're sitting on the bike. Uh, this one says A-L, let's see. And this is A-R. So this guy right here basically is going to clean up that crank arm and it's going to also create the threads at the same time. So this is tapered. We've got real sharp edges here. So we're going to get this started. As long as we're coming in the hole nice and straight, there shouldn't be an issue. If you're a little crooked, you're just going to make bigger problems. So always just come in nice and straight. Start that cleaning out that crank arm, that hole. And then we get to this portion here where it starts uh, creating new threads. And then once those threads are created, then we go over to, we're calling this bushing, but also called, well, it's not really, I guess it could be called a helicoil too, but it's something pretty similar to that, I believe. Um, and there are left and right sides. So we got to use the correct side. Uh, this is our H, yeah, so this is right. So it almost looks like a spring. So once we create the threads with this guy, then we go in with this, we install it. Um, hopefully, it looks like we have to install it by finger, and I think it will uh, it'll it'll um, it'll work with us. So we'll screw that in there. We're going to be using some thread locker, a uh, permanent thread locker. So not the blue. We're going to be using something different. I think it's either red or green. I'll have to double check on that. Let that sit probably for 24 hours, and then boom, that created the thread. Then we can come over. Then you can go ahead. This was a pedal here, so we're just going to use this as an example. So this is going to be installed in the crank arm. Then you come over here, and you're going to install going the correct way. If this is on the right side, you're standing on the right side, you're going to be going clockwise. That screws right in. Boom, and you got your pedal and crank arm. All your set is working. All right, first thing we're going to do is get this pedal out of there. So if you're on the drive side or the right side of the bike, we're going to go counterclockwise. If you're on, if the if it's a pedal on the left side, stay on the right side of the bike, stay on this side, and still unscrew your left pedal counterclockwise. And that will work for tightening as well. So I'm going to try by fingers, actually. It's okay. It's a little stuck, so I'm just gonna use a regular pedal wrench. This one does not have access on the other side, so I cannot use an Allen tool. So we're just gonna use this regular pedal wrench. There, and fingers. So it's kind of like a gray, grayish, gray grease. And that's most likely, not that the grease was gray, probably started out a totally different color. But um, since this was incorrectly installed, it was loose, so it was migrating, turning, destroying the metal here. So it was actually now took those metal threads, kind of mushed it up into like a clay, uh, intersected with the grease, and uh, changed color. So a little difficult to come off, but just keep working it. You're not going to do any other damage. Just try and come out, you know, straight as you can, and, and keep working it till it's out completely. So I'm just going to double this up real good. And just give that, give it a gentle wipe just so we can see what's going on here with the threads. And once you get the majority of this stuff off, maybe come back with a, a toothbrush or a little uh, degreaser or even a wire brush, clean these threads up. If these threads are gone, your pedal's gone. It's pretty much garbage. Toss it. Um, I'm pretty sure those are gone too. So we'll get back to this pedal later. But a lot of good can here. Definitely got metal shavings in there. So just clean this out the best you can. Put on gloves if you want. Um, twist this up in there and Remember, beware of shavings. Clean that the best you can. Get a toothbrush, wire brush, and then maybe hit it with some air and just make sure you don't blow shavings into your face or anybody else's face. So, it might be hard to see on the camera, but definitely smooth. Running a screwdriver through here. Uh, I'd say the threads are um, pretty much 80% uh, gone, if not 90%. A little gouging on the outside here. Uh, that's just from the pedal 
hit in the face of this, not a big deal here on the, on the face, but inside completely gone, maybe one or two threads left way in the back, um, but we're gonna clean this up. So basically we're making this hole maybe a little bit bigger, um, or at least getting rid of the threads, the, all the threads, and then we're gonna form some new threads. All right, so we're gonna use this tool right here. This is a Unoir, it's called a ART 16951AL. That was gonna be for left, that's all I know. And then make sure you're getting the, the correct size of your, um, your inner thread here. This thread's gonna fit uh, your, your most common pedals of today. And basically we're gonna come in nice and straight. Always stand back, take a look, because it's hard to see if you're tilted down, tilted sideways. Basically I'm gonna push it in flush, just about like that. That's gonna be a good start. And I'm gonna start turning. See if I can get it started with the fingers. At least get it kind of stuck in there. And, and then take a look back. That's about as far as I can go with fingers. Take a look, make sure it's not tilted down, tilted to the side. You wanna come in nice and straight. And once you've established that, I mean, you can go ahead and continue to turn. Uh, you could use a wrench, but uh, I prefer this tool right here. Um, these come in different looks. This is a park tool. Uh, it's a TH-2, it's basically, you open this up, it's gonna grab this perfectly, basically comes a T-handle, and you can just turn this, and it's gonna help you keep a nice and even turn, trying not to get too crooked or anything like that. And we'll see if it fits, actually. So this guy's a bit small. It's made for smaller bits, probably for cleaning or reaming out or chasing threads on like a, a rear derailleur attachment or something like that. So I'm gonna break out my other T-handle which is this guy right here. So I got two different styles. This one, let's see if this one goes bigger. Shit, I think this one's too small as well. All right, so this guy's pretty big. It doesn't fit any of my attachment tools. So I'm trying to configure something that's still gonna give me some good uh, balance and strength. So I basically got a socket style Allen tool. This is a number eight. And then I got my regular attachment tool. Uh, the one that's a little too small for this, but um, it's able to fit that in there, tighten it up. Got a good bite. Now we're gonna use the back end of your socket, which is just a square, a 3 8 size. And it fits a little bit loose. So once it's on, there's a little bit of a little bit of jiggle there. But um, the thing is we won't be applying a, a ton of torque. Uh, it won't have to go too tight. We will have to use some, uh, there is some resistance, but not to the point where we're gonna harm the tool or uh, this tool, the cutting tool. So we're gonna give this a shot. And remember, you're nice, you're coming in nice and straight. I'm gonna stand right over it, look right down the middle, come in nice and straight here, and then just start turning. If it, you don't feel it catching, just you're gonna push forward, give it a little pressure this way as you're turning, and just continue to turn. Or you might have to keep doing the same thing. So, uh, cutting oil is probably not a bad idea if you have some. If you don't have some in a pinch, we could use some uh, tri-flow, basically some chain lube, non-wax stuff. Uh, probably anything will be okay at this point. We're not gonna, again, we're not gonna be doing any harm, but we're trying to preserve maybe the blades of our tool. So we definitely got more metal shavings coming out. So if you see stuff coming out, I see it kind of spitting out the back, maybe cover up your chain. If your chain's gonna, is a little sticky with oil, we don't want those fragments to stick on there, cause some issues. Otherwise you're gonna have to clean that chain up really good because metal in the chain is just gonna cause more wear. And this seems to be working pretty good, going nice and straight. So again, this tool's tapered, so we got it's easy to start. And basically we're gonna take it all the way through till we hit the threads in the back. I'm just about approaching the first thread. Go ahead and apply a little more oil on there. And it's gonna catch, so try not to push too much. Again, if it's still spinning, Give it a push until it catches. Push this way, turn. But you gotta know when to let go and not push and let it just pull itself in. So this area, you don't wanna play around with too much. And I know it's hard the first time trying to fill this thing out because you wanna apply enough pressure to get these threads to catch. Once it catches, let it pull itself in. You're gonna turn, it's gonna sink, sink in, no problem. But if you're not applying enough pressure and you're just spinning, 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 um, you could be possibly damaging, not damaging, but uh, compromising the, the metal inside here to catch our first thread. So there's that fine point of, it's really hard to explain the feel, but so here it just got real tough. So I'm gonna relax pressure from pushing this way and I'm just gonna spin 
yeah, so now just spinning is real tough. So I'm definitely cutting new metal. The threads are, have caught, I believe, and we're just gonna let it suck itself in. Uh, we're gonna back up a little bit now that we hit the thread portion. We're gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna hit it with some light air, cover your eyes, get all those shavings out of there. So give a turn, roll back. It's supposed to clean out the threading area. So any new shavings, they'll get pushed out, get out of the way. And that may sound counterintuitive. Although it does sound like you're going back and kind of just crunching up the old stuff. Right there, it gets tight again. Turn back up. And just, we're gonna keep going all the way until this tool basically goes through the other side. I wanna see threads come out the other side. So since I'm working by myself, I'm gonna get a little more assistance. This guy wants to rotate a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this horizontal to the chain stay, but on the other side, the left side of the crank, I'm gonna attach a pedal strap to the chain stay so it'll hold this still for me, maybe offer a little more leverage. Yeah, this is working enough. It's moving a little bit, but it's holding it. Now I guess I can use two hands. Still can't tell if I see a thread on this side, but it's definitely spinning easier. So yeah, definitely much easier. So I'm gonna say I'm all the way through. Yeah, I can see my threads coming through. So just for good measure, I'm gonna take this. Mm, yeah, I'd say about half the threads are showing on this side. So then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this guy back out. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna clean get all this loose debris out of here. And it's gonna go real gently here. So definitely a good sign I can unscrew this. It's coming out, not a lot of resistance. So basically, kind of like the way that works. It's actually looking pretty good. So you're seeing all new threads in there. So when I stuck my tool in earlier, it was pretty smooth. Now, all that little bzz, 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 or that, all those are new threads, boom. And then the gouging on the outside here, I'm not too worried about that. If you got a little file or some sort, something you don't mind using on some aluminum, just you can kind of shave that down a bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and put a new pedal in. If there's any issues, maybe we'll throw a washer on it. Um, we'll see what fits best. So this size, this hole is oversized. We're definitely not gonna fit a pedal in there. Let's give that a shot. So this, this is a regular, regular pedal, I believe it's 9 16 yeah, so that doesn't fit, which makes sense. We're gonna be using our insert here. So this insert will go ahead and screw in there, but let's clean this out first. So we're gonna clean this out some more, um, hit it with some degreaser or alcohol, anything that's gonna get any um, grease or oil out of there. And then we're gonna apply some, uh, a certain type of thread locker. So a certain type of thread locker, it's gonna be permanent. And then we're gonna screw this guy in and Looks like it's gonna be going clockwise. And then that's gonna go in, it's gonna be flush inside our crank. And then once that's there, and you come back, we're gonna screw in our pedal right into that. Yeah, so definitely, once we put our thread locker in, probably gonna have to let it sit about 24 hours, let this dry permanently, um, and then we can come back and install our pedal. And make sure your little, your new thread is nice and clean too. And uh, for the heck of it, I'm gonna try and keep my fingers off the threads. Make sure that's nice and dry. Went ahead and gonna use some Loctite. The company's Loctite. There's another company called Permatex. Um, basically, so Loctite's calling their Red 271. This is for, they're calling it permanent. So it's for heavy duty, for large fasteners, blah, blah, blah. And put a liberal amount on your threads. So as you're spinning this, it's gonna move around. We're not worried about overdoing it because we want this to stay permanent. This is threads we're never gonna touch again. Basically, it's gonna be a whole new threaded crank arm. So I got that pretty much covered. I'd say about 98%. We're gonna go ahead and thread that in. Ah, nice and straight, get those. Not a bad idea to clean your floor when you're done. That way we don't get metal fragments back on this thing. You go ahead and put a dab here in the middle too. A couple dabs in there. So we're gonna take this thread all the way in. 
and we don't want any of this new thread exposed on this side. If anything, it's going to be exposed on the back side. We want this to be flush or just below flush. So right now it's getting a little tough, but I could still get my fingers on there. You can always stick your finger inside and give it a turn. It's turning nicely. So right there we got just a lip exposed. I want to take that all the way in. Go flush and then maybe just a half thread or a thread just below. That when you run your finger this way, you're not feeling that new thread. So nothing exposed here, nice and flat. If anything, it's going to be on the back side. So this is the back side. So we definitely got some threads exposed. It's totally normal. Got at least one or two threads exposed right there. So perfect. That's what we want. So let's see what the recommendation for dry time is. Product type, let's see, permanent 271 red, fastener size up to one inch, torque in pounds. Torque in pounds, it can take up to 250 pounds to 275, that's good. We're probably doing about 40 or 50 newton meters for the pedal, definitely lower than that. Uh, cure, fixture, full, um, so for fixture, 10 minutes, whatever that means. And then full cure is about 24 hours. Uh, temperature range, temperature range that this will work in is minus 65 degrees to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Cool beans. So we're definitely going to let this dry 24 hours. Then we're going to go back and get our new pedal. Um, you can check out your original pedal. This is one that came out. Um, I cleaned up with uh, some paper towels. I'm going to clean this up better with the brush, but just looking at it, it looks like all the threads are in place. You can always test it on another crank arm. Uh, make sure you got the right side. This is the right pedal. So I'm going to go onto a right crank arm and I'm going to turn this clockwise um, Just to make sure that these threads are okay. Don't force it. Just use fingers if you can get it started get it turned one two turns um, And all the rest of the threads are looking pretty good then most likely this is this as well a lot of the pedals are using steel uh, hardened steel I'm assuming um, a lot of the crank arms are aluminum. So these threads are looking pretty good and uh, most likely be able to reuse the old pedal. If you guys have any questions on this, just um, shoot, hit me up on the comments. Uh, if you find this very helpful, uh, give me a like if you like it, subscribe, and then hit that notification bell so you know when uh, the next video is coming up. If you have any questions, um, any new projects or whatever you need uh, assistance on, let me know. I can create a video or just answer your questions.